guys, I'm here today at the Scrappy Quilter. I am going to be taking a class on a Marty Michelle log cabin ruler. Let's go inside and take a look. I don't think I've ever seen a shamrock Christmas tree. <laughs> That's nice. They have 108 backings over here and lots of inspiration on the walls and in the windows. <laughs> Recognize that? I made that last year. That's not the one I made, but I made I made it from that pattern I saw it. I was so inspired. No, 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 no. No. Stacy. Right when you walk in the store, they have all of the new fabrics that they've got that have come in. Recognize the hives and the bumblebees. <laughs> and there is all of the blue bonnet fabric. Now you come talk to us first because. Uh,
I travel and teach with Marty and work shows with Marty. So if you come to Houston, come see us in the booth because I will be there. And um, this is my little Marty world, and I'm happy here. Um, I don't know a lot anymore about other rulers and tools and stuff because Marty's got so many great tools and so many great ideas that that's just what I, I live here and I'm happy. Today we're going to do the log cabin. Starting again, I'm going to cut a square, move up, and cut my B and my C. Hi everybody! Hey, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I had the privilege today to take a class at my local quilt store called Scrappy Quilter in Shirts, Texas. You guys will hear a sewing machine going in the background. Our students are still in here and pretty busy. Let's play Meet the Teacher. This is Brenda Usmus. Good she, to meet y'all. She is from New Braunfels, Texas, and she is a Marty Michelle instructor. And today she taught the 10 by 10, so you can use it with a layer cake, log cabin ruler class. The oh. most important things to, uh, to make a successful log cabin, my blocks aren't sewn together yet, but I just put them up there so the class could see. The two most important hints that I could give you about making a successful log cabin block is to cut your strips on the lengthwise grain. And by that, I mean parallel to the selvage. Right, you were real Not the particular. width of fabric. Was I was real. very particular yeah. about that mm -hmm. because it makes it more successful. You don't have to stretch in your strips. And the other thing is to cut your logs to length before you start. So every time you add a log to your log cabin block, you are checking that it is the accurate length and your block is sewn correctly. Yep. Marty has rulers and this is the log cabin layer cake ruler and the rulers are designed so that she has already prefigured the lengths that you need to make an eight and three quarter inch block with the layer cakes so this ruler came with the uh, the pattern. It was part. This was we had to get this as part of the class, and it makes what's the what is the size of it's this? It's an eight and three quarter inch block. Okay, so it makes an eight and three quarter inch block. Hey, you guys that have watched me for a while, do you recognize this blue bonnet fabric? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we're kind of partial to that in Texas, yeah, aren't we? Yes, we are. I came back to get more, and somebody bought it all. So. The ruler that comes with this particular uh, pattern is designed to go on a layer cake. And if you guys recall, that is a 10 inch square. And the layer cake is uh, proprietary to Moda, but it will work on any 10 inch square blocks. So even if you guys had fat quarters and you wanted to cut them to 10 inch squares, then you could use this. this doesn't have to be like this. This is a layout that you chose, right? Correct. Yeah. Nice. Okay. There are several different layouts in the pattern. I'm not going to put this back right, I'm sure. Is that's that how? pretty good. Okay. Is that how that's going to go? Yep. All right. Good. Tell me why this ruler is so handy to make this block. The ruler is wonderful because it is, uh, she's prefigured the legs for each of the different blocks. For instance, the center block is simply cut on A. You start with the strip and then you subcut the lengths. So the center and the first light are A and then B and you move down the ruler. And your logs are cut to length so that you know every time when you've sewn your two A's together and you add your B, if this strip doesn't fit, whoa, stop. It won't get any better. You have to look at your uh, cutting, piecing, and pressing techniques, but it should just fit. And then when your block is done, once you've added the last piece, your block is square and everything fits. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, you guys. It was, I, I'm not sure I could have done it without your help because I'm new to log cabin piecing. Yes. And you know, we're all used to doing it the old way, going around and around. And, and this is just a little bit different that has you cut them to length before, you know, normally on a regular log cabin, you sew a strip on and then trim it to length. 
these are cut to length before they're That's sewn. That's right. So yeah. you have to know which side it goes on. Right. And you have to follow in directions. And Marty has some really great tips in here on how to sew the log cabin block and be successful. Yep. That's what we want. We had a successful class. We did. We did. We had quite a number of people finish their first set of six blocks. I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have had a lot of fun, Brenda. Thank you so much. And you told me that Marty Michelle is going to be coming here for a visit soon. She will be in this area in April. Okay, great. Well, let's see if we can't get her behind, on camera as oh, well. Oh, she's a great, she's a great personality. She has lots of fun on camera. That's awesome. Okay. Well, hey, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Becky. We'll I enjoyed you. meeting you and having a class. Enjoyed meeting you too. All right. Okay. See you again. Bye.